Hi everyone, I'm Christy and welcome to Life Springs Online. We're so excited that you chose to worship with us today. If this is your first time, please scan the QR code on the screen so that we can connect with you and give you a free gift. If you want to stay up to date on all that's going on at Life Springs Church, text 411 to the number on the screen and you'll see everything going on. If you would, take a moment and share this broadcast and don't forget to like and subscribe on all of our social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. The more you do, the further the gospel spreads on social media. We've got a great service in store for you today, and we want you to get ready to worship God. So for those of you with kids, go ahead and get them ready for their own service by heading over to lifesprings.online slash kids for a virtual kids service. All right, it's time to worship. Go ahead, get yourself pumped. And if you're physically able, please feel free to stand. Let's make wherever you are a place of worship so that you can lean in to the presence of God.
This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of the 
put your hands together right now if you serve a God who's been good to you. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'd like to sing that part in just a second with all my heart, if you don't mind my, um, that part. I, I want to teach you something. Who wants to learn something? Put your hands up here now. God is a triune God. Who is he? He's the what? The Father. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You and I were made in the likeness and image of God, right? So we have, watch this, a body, a soul, and a spirit. I don't know if you do that about yourself or not. You have a body, you, you, right? Look over, pinch the person beside of you. That's their body. You feel that, right? That's your body. Your soul is that inner voice you've had since you were a little boy or a little girl. That self-talk. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? That, that, that true you inside of you. Now, here's the interesting thing. Because of sin, we've been born with a dead spirit. Our spirit is dead. And that's the reason some of you come to a worship service like this, and it just feels like a concert. And you're kind of like, let's get on through the singing so we can get to the, wor the word, because that's really what you got. And the reason why it's not necessarily your fault is because your spirit is dead. It's like, now, now, you don't have to stay dead in your spirit. The Bible says it's kind of like a candle that has a wick that's not lit yet. You see, the Bible says the Holy Spirit comes and takes up residence inside of us. And those of us who were dead in Christ are now alive in Christ. And he lights that wick, and now we're on fire for God. Y'all understand? See, this is very important for you to get. So if somebody's talking to you, tell them to hush because you need to hear this right here. Ready? Watch this. If you have a, when you're born, your body is in control. Your soul is in the middle and your spirit is dead. That's the reason you ever seen a younger that whenever they want to be fed, they say, get out of bed. I don't care if you sleeping, get out of bed and feed me, right? That's the reason whenever, and whenever you grow up, your flesh rules your body. I mean, rules yourself. And that's why when you want to eat it, you eat it. You want to smoke it, you smoke it. You want to sleep with them, you sleep with them. Because why? Your flesh, your body does whatever feels good. But when we come to Christ, he says we crucify ourselves. Come on, y'all understand, right? And now that dead spirit becomes alive, and that soul's still in the middle. But there's a transformation that happens where the body now is being crucified. It don't call the shots. And now the spirit of God has let your spirit come alive. And now you're a worshiper. And those who worship me and must worship me in spirit and in truth. Y'all tracking with me? It's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's a regeneration. It's a transformation. It's what God does when he comes into your, your dead self. Maybe you're in here and you never had God light your spirit on fire. You picked a great week to be in church. You picked a great week to worship online. I want you to say right now, close your eyes and just say, God, wake my dead spirit up. God, set me alive inside. Set me alive inside. Wake me up. Re revive, revive my spirit. I don't want this to feel like a concert. I want this to feel like a worship service. Revive me, oh Lord. Revive me. Come on, say that. Revive me, oh Lord. Come on, say it again, everybody. Revive me, oh Lord. Now, the best way for this to happen right now is to say, God, come into my heart and life. Forgive me of my sins. And all of a sudden, invite the Holy Spirit to take up residence in you. And once you've done that, now you're a Christian. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Now, what I want us to do, one more time, I want us to sing the song. But this time, what I want you to do, I want you to involve the whole three parts of you. I want you to raise your hands. If you involve your body, okay? Maybe, maybe you're from a... Uh, I ain't going to call it a name, but a church that didn't raise hands, okay? Maybe maybe you're e Episcopal or something, so you might want to raise a fam finger or something, right? Maybe you're Baptist, and so you can do it like this, okay? But some of you is full-blown Pentecostal. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Come on, right? Just whatever you want to do. But raise a hand. Get your body involved, okay? Get your soul involved. What am I talking about? Read these words on the screen. Don't just listen. Focus. Get your mind. Come on, say focus. No spiritual AD with D when we go through this. And I believe God's going to revive your spirit. Say it again. Say, revive my spirit, Lord. Come on. I want you to lift your voices, lift your hands, and let's get involved. One more time, and then we're going to go in service. Let's worship God in spirit and in truth. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your voice. That's a body. Focus. Come on, focus right now. Focus on Him. You're my. You, 
that it is possible for you to hear all these songs and not worship. Don't let that happen. your hands together for a God who's been good to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, we're going to move on, but I want to teach you. I just taught you how to worship. Okay? Next week when you come in here, we're going to get, watch the three parts. I want our body so involved. If you got it, say got it. Look at the person beside of you and say, I knew you could get it. Go ahead and do that right now. I knew you could get it. You look back at him and say, I'm surprised you could. Go ahead right now. I'm surprised you could. And you can have a seat. Amen. We're glad you're here. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being in this place. How many of you appreciate the fact that God shows up every time we do plus some? Come on, hold your hands up. Good night. Amen. My name's Dale. I'm the lead pastor of Life Spring Church, and I welcome you here. Thank you so much for being here. I want to welcome everybody in here, everybody in the lounge, everybody in the party room. The lounge is for those that like to get up and move around during the service. We do broadcast from here, so we record, so we try to keep this one stiller and quieter. And for those that have kids that aren't ready to take advantage of our excellent kids ministry, but they struggle sitting still and quiet in here, we also have the party room, so you can worship in there with a live feed. But I also want to say hello right now to my friends at Selma. So good to be with you last week, and our friends at Western Harnett and our friends at the Sanford campus and our friends from around the world. Would you do me a favor and say hello to everybody from everywhere? Go ahead right now. We're glad you're here. Glad you're here. Got some milestones I want to celebrate. How many of you like to celebrate? Let me hear an amen right now. Want to celebrate some milestones. One thing I want to celebrate is that this year, this weekend, this week is, is a time that, and I, we missed the January one, but I'm going to tell you about January one, and then I'm going to tell you about this one. In January of 2013 is when we launched our first 9 a.m. service. Come on, and we celebrate that. We're excited about that. And this March, this is the first we launched our Thursday service. We've been doing Thursday service. All my Thursday service fans, make a big racket for everybody online right now. Exciting. I see Micah Tyler's in here. He was with me uh, during that time. I think you were the only staff member, full-time staff member. And I said, we, went, we had one service. I said, we're going to two, and I'm not raising your salary at all. You know, go ahead. He loved it. He was very excited about that part of it, but uh, helped us, and we, we set this auditorium up different, and uh, we had to uh, put pipe and drape. Anybody remember those days? We set pipe and drape up, and, and we had chairs, and we moved them because we had such a few people, and now it is this Thursday is our second largest service here at the Sanford campus, and um, yeah, you can clap for it if you want to, but I got a reason I'm saying it. I just want to say to Selma, despise not the day of small beginnings. Can I hear an amen right now? You, you, it just grows, and God just, he's a Lord of the harvest, and we're so excited. And while we're talking about that, I told you we're going to celebrate some things. Can I tell you something else? That, that started a 10-year, honestly, a 10-year revival. Our church began to explode with growth when we went to two services. I think we were averaging about 175 people. We went to Thursday service, and within a year, we had over 400 people. And now I'm proud to tell you that we're averaging over 800 people every weekend at Life Spring Church. And I'm excited about that. And i um, you know, COVID did a number on, on our nation, but, uh, but we've been building back, and already this year we're blowing records away from last year and are growing over last year and giving and, and whatever else. But this has got to be, and I don't know, it's hard to say when you've been, a, when your church is, uh, I guess we're 43 years old, so it's a little bit hard to say, but I'm pretty sure this is a record. I'm proud to tell you this, and I hope you will, I hope you will celebrate this. What I'm getting ready to tell you is, in my opinion, a miracle, and I hope you just really, really celebrate this with the, with the joy that is needed. We've had 188 people this year alone give their life to Jesus Christ. Come on. And, and 124 of them were adults, but here's another one. Watch this. 35 of them were teenagers. I, I need you to get louder than that right now. And while you're clapping, 29 of them were kids. Can we celebrate it right now? I'm blown away at that. It just... 
just blows me away. And so I want to I want to let you know because of that, the Bible says, "How do you let people know you're a Christian?" It does not say that you're supposed to walk an aisle, raise a hand, check a box, get a honk if you love Jesus bumper sticker on your car, or get a crucifix. None of that is in the Bible. What is in the Bible? The Bible says that the way you let people know you're a Christian is through what. And I don't know if I've done a good enough job, honestly, as your pastor teaching you that. Because a lot of you kind of sit back and you're like, I don't know, it's kind of optional. I don't know if I have to do that to be saved. I'm not saying you have to do it to be saved. I'm just telling you the Bible teaches that we should do that. And if Jesus says we should do it, we should do it. Can I hear an amen, right? And so if we had that many people that have made a commitment or recommitment to Jesus Christ, I want to invite you. I'm inviting you. I'm I'm asking you on the authority of not Dale Sauls and Life Springs, but on the authority of God's Word to be baptized. And not only that, I got a very special time for you to be baptized. Are you ready? How about this? How about on Easter Sunday in our new building? Come on. Amen. I hope and I pray that's the biggest baptism we've ever had in the history of this church. Who can say amen? I'm hoping and praying that's the biggest baptism we've ever had in the history of this church. I want you to celebrate it. April 6th and 9th, we're going we're gonna, to uh, hopefully have the largest ba- I want you to go ahead and sign up now. If you've been on the fence, take it. You say, I'm looking for a sign. This is your sign. You know, I got it. Ready? If you've been watching online and waiting for your opportunity, this is your opportunity. Now, because of that, and I I hope a lot of you will, you say, well, I was baptized as a kid. Is it all right? I think it is. Um, If you've rededicated your life to the Lord, you've been away, I'm encouraging you to do that. Now, um, because of that, I don't know if you heard what I said, but I said we're going to do this. Where at? Did y'all hear that? Did did you hear that? It's Sanford Campus, the new building, but I want everybody at Selma and Western Hornet to hear what I'm getting ready to say as well. It looks like we're going to be able to get in our new building by Easter Sunday. But, okay, yeah, that's requiring inspectors and everybody working with us. It looks like it's going to happen. But for that to happen, we need your help. We're going to, I mean, it's, I, I feel like maybe preaching a series called, let's go. Come on, somebody, right? How many of you understand that? It is go time. It is full court press, and we need your help. we got to put together furniture. we got to move chairs. I don't know what all we can do, but I know that on March the 11th and 18th, at least 18th, we need as many of you, the 11th, we could use a few of you, but the 18th, we need as many of you, look at the person beside of you, say that includes you, we need you to come and help that day. You say, well, what is everybody going to do? Let me tell you what one of the things we're going to do. We're going to be putting together furniture, we're going to be, we're going to be moving chairs, but let me tell you something else we're going to do. We're going to pray over that building. How many of you believe in the power of prayer? I need you to mark your calendar. We, I'm asking you, I'm, I'm pleading with you to come and help on that day, and to, uh, and let's get in there. How many of you think this is going to be the best Easter yet? Come on, right? So, so let's do this together. Say together. All right. Hey, I'm so thrilled to be a part of it. I want to invite the Western Harnett campus and the Selma campus to be a part of this as well, because we are one church in several locations. Come on, somebody, right? Now, would you do me a favor here and at whatever campus you're watching this, I want you right now to put your hands together for your preaching pastor. Come on, put your hands together. Hey, everybody. Hey, I'm Pastor Daniels, Outreach Pastor here at Life Springs Church, and I want to welcome you this here today. If this is your first time here, sit back, relax, chill out. Hey, no pressure. Hey, because I promise you, you're going to hear something today. It's going to shake you a little bit, but just grab onto it and ride it like a bull. <laughs> all right? Can you do that? Yeah. All right, all right. Listen, we're going to go ahead and get this party started because Pastor Dale already laid out and, and, did, and did all the, 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 the preliminary stuff. So can I go ahead and get started? I'm going to anyway, cause I got get, cause I ain't got I ain't got much time. Look at look at your name and say he ain't got much time. He ain't got much time. Hey, so listen, if you want to follow along in today's sermon sermon, um, you can text nine one nine. That was weak. Come on now, come on. You can text nine one nine. You can text sermon to that number, and you can get the sermon notes for today. All right. Okay, listen, we are in a sermon series called what? All right, that okay. Let me let me teach you. I had the opportunity of going to Selma and Western Hornet and preaching there, and I had a. I think I I told you guys about it. But I, listen, there's a way you say let's go. Anybody remember the wonderful TV show called Power Rangers? Yes. 
Oh, Sookie, now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then and, and you say, let's go. You remember that? You remember that? So when you say, let's go, you got to put your, throw your hands up in there like that. You ready? So, so the title of this sermon is called what? Let's go. Where your, where your hands at? Where your arms at? Ready? The title of this sermon is called what? Let's go. Okay, that was good, but I see a little more that y'all ain't got your, your arm together. I'm trying to get your cardio in. Are you ready? The title of this sermon is called what? There you go. Let's go. Let's go. And the title of this sermon is called Fear to Faith. Fear to Faith. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about from fear to faith. And I want to I wanna share some things with you because let me tell you something. All right. Hold on. There we go. Nah. But we're going to talk about from fear to faith. And so while we talk about this, hold on. I'm going to give me one second. Y'all know I don't never use notes, right? All right, if you could just hand me that right there, that'd be good. <laughs> See how the devil be playing with me? We're going to get this party started, though, all right? So listen, we're the sermon series called Let's Go. I mean, the sermon series called Let's Go. And so last week we talked about how, how an entire generation missed their promised land. Hi, and Pastor, 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 Pastor Jonathan, he brought it like it was hot, didn't he? He brought it like it was hot. And he talked about how following the crowd, you know what? Don't follow the crowd because they most of the time what? Wrong. They get it wrong. They get it wrong. He talked about how that Moses took, sent 12 spies over into the promised land. And when he took these 12 spies over and told them to scout the land and make sure everything was good, and when he did that, they came back. And when he came back, they got together and they gave the report of Moses, what Moses was, was over in the promised land. And, and 10 of them said, hey, yeah, it's wonderful, but 10 of them had buts. But two of them said, let's go. Let's go experience the promised land. Let's go and see what God has for us. Let's go and do and, and, and possess what God has promised us. Two of them said, let's go, but 10 of them were scared. They were scared. And so today, I, I want to I wanna keep on through this journey as we talk about Joshua. I want to I wanna, I wanna home in on some things because I've learned this, that when God gets ready to move a generation or gets ready to move a vision down the road, first he deals with the leader. Second, he deals with the people, and then he deals with the individual. And so as, 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 as we are creating, as, as you notice, all around the world, have y'all noticed that revival is sparking out all over the world? And I believe that revival is going to sweep through here at Light Springs Church. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. Revival is coming. And so even as we prepare our hearts and our minds to let's go as we move into this new building, let me tell you something. We're getting ready for what God is about to send our way. And so we have to be ready to be, what, to be ready to receive what God has for us. And so this week, I, I, I want to I wanna share how the promise sometimes can cause us, the, the move of the promise can cause us fear sometimes. And so I want to talk about how we can take our fear and change it to faith. I want to do that for a few moments because um, back in 2008 and 2009, I don't know if you know all my whole story, but I was in the Bahamas, and I got bit by a bug. And when I got back here to the States, I noticed that my legs wasn't working right. And so as, I, as the day went on through the day, I noticed that my legs completely stopped working. And before I know it, I was in the hospital paralyzed from the waist down. Got went to CCH, and they told me, we can't help you here. We're going to have to send you to Chapel Hill. Got to Chapel Hill, they said, we don't know what's going on with you. For several weeks, they did not know what my diagnosis was. They just know you was, I was paralyzed from the waist down. They realized after a few weeks, they said, we, we, you have a, a, neuro, a neuro disease called transverse myelitis. This is a rare disease, and, and most, most likely you will never walk again. So they sent me up to the 7th floor of Chapel Hill to rehab because I was like, well, if you say I'm going to never walk again, why are you going to send me to rehab? But anyway, he, they sent me up there. Sit me up there, and every morning the doctors would make their rounds about 9 o'clock. About six doctors would walk in the room and go through the same routine and tell me this is going on and this is going on. But all I heard is you'll never walk again. The next morning, the same routine, all I heard was you'll never walk again. 
Well, some weeks passed by and they started sending the, the physical therapist in. The doctor will come in at 9 o'clock and say, you will never walk again. But the physical therapist will come and say, get up, let's get up, let's go. We got to get you out and walk out of here because we believe that you're going to walk again. So at 9 o'clock, the doctor said, you'll never walk again. But at 12 o'clock, the physical therapist said, come on, get up, you're going to walk again. 9 o'clock, the doctor said, you ain't going to never walk again. The physical therapist said, yes, you are going to walk again. So that leads us to our life spring social media moment. Make sure you take your phones out and take a picture. This is going to bless your life. This is going to bless your life. I promise you, I've been trying to lose weight anyway for a good picture. So make sure you take a picture of this. You hear me? Are you ready? Say ready. The life spring social media moment is this. Faith and fear are both contagious. Which one are you spreading? Which one are, oh. Which one are you spreading? Now, if I would have listened to the doctors, I would have never walked again. But I'm so glad I listened to the physical therapist. Because after a while, she kept telling me, I'm going to walk again, I'm going to walk again. I start telling myself, I'm going to walk again because her faith is contagious. And look at me now, I'm walking again. Yeah. Faith and fear are both contagious. Which one are you spreading? So, let me give you some Bible context. Let me, let me, let me give you some, some foundation. Now, now, now listen, uh, now Moses is dead. Moses is dead and Joshua is the new leader. God has a pep talk, because I remember you told you he, God, when God want to move a generation, first thing he's going to do is talk to, the, talk to the leader, right? He gives a, pre, a pep talk to Joshua and he lets Joshua know some things that he needs to know. And one, the first thing is, I, your God, will give you every place your foot should step. That's a promise. He gives, he says, he says, he gives Joshua another pep talk. He says, let me tell you something, Joshua. No one will ever be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. Meaning if somebody trying to fight you, they're going to lose. He says, I will be with you always, even into the ends of the earth. God gives Joshua three promises that he's going to do as he leads his people into the promised land. He gives promises. But sometimes promises comes with requirements. But he said, Joshua, this is what I need for you to do. Number one, I need for you to be strong and be, have, good, have courage. Be strong and have courage. So look at your name and say, be strong. Come on, tell them with some, uh, some, some bass in your voice. Say, be strong. Be strong and have courage. Second thing he wants them to do, he says, I need for you to obey the law that I have given Moses. Get in your word, because you're going to need the word of God. And when you get in the word, he says, meditate it on it on day and night and keep it on your lips. It's important to have the word when you're going up against your enemy and when you're going into your promised land. You know what he tells them? Again, he says, be strong and have courage. He don't just tell them twice. He tells them three times, be strong and have courage. I guess just like any man, you can't just tell us something one time. You got to tell us several times. So after God has spoken to Joshua, he tells his officers, go tell the people, get ready and let's go. Get them motivated because in three days, we're crossing Jordan to the promised land. Get them, tell them, get ready. Tell them, get the shoes together, put the back makeup on, get the pocketbook, get the stuff, get the children, because in three days, we're going to get our promise. We're going to get what belongs to us. And so, three days, we're going to get it. And so today, I told you, first, he deals with the leader. Second, he deals with the people. And number three, he deals with the individual. So today, I want to introduce to you someone that has, has went from fear to faith. Now, this person has been, we're going to highlight some things, and we're going to see how, we, how, she, how she took some steps from fear fear being scared to having faith having so much faith that she is now in the hall of faith in the new testament are you ready say ready, ready. i can't hear you say ready. ready here we go here it is right here then joshua son of nun secretly sent two spies from i ain't gonna say that because i'm gonna cuss <laughs> i ain't gonna say that right there 
It sounds, you just sound it out. It sounds just like it say. All right? Go, look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahaz and stayed there. Mm, this story is already good. It's already good. Now Joshua wanted to send two spies. Now you've got to remember that Joshua was one of the spies that, we, that Moses sent over with Caleb that came back and said, yes, we can take the land. Now Joshua goes back and said, I need to go one, and do one more recon. So he secretly, he don't tell nobody, he said, y'all go on over there and spy out the land, especially Jericho, especially Jericho, because that's where the city is. That's where, and, and we meet a woman by the name of Rahab. Who is Rahab? I'm glad you asked because I'm nosy too, and I want to know who she is. Rahab is a prostitute. She's a Canaanite woman, and she's not a Jew. Her home is where people come for entertainment, just like a, a motel, a bar. It's the hangout spot here. People, and, and mind you, uh, uh, Rahab grew up in Jericho, so that means she's a Canaanite woman. She grew up in a pagan environment, meaning that she worshiped idols and false gods. Her household consists of her, her mom, her dad, her siblings, and they children too. That's everybody. Somebody say everybody. Everybody lived in their house. And so, 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 so that's who we're dealing with. Her name is Rahab. Somebody say Rahab. Rahab. Somebody say Rahab. Rahab. Her name is Rahab. Now, mind you, please, stay focused. Don't judge a book by its cover. Because most people will take that information and simply block it out. They say, she's a sinner. She has nothing to say to me. But home in. She got a lot to say. Here it is right here. The king of Jericho was told. I wonder why the world, how the king know that these people, these spies is at, at Rahab's house. Let's find out. Look, someone of Israelite has come here tonight to spy out the land. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So the king Jericho sent a message to Rahab. He must know Rahab. Bring out the men who came to you and enter your house. Because they have come to spy out the whole land. The king got word. Hey, I, uh, I heard Rahab got some folk down there at her place down there. <laughs> I, I find it amusing, he, get, get me, that this Rahab house got to be the hangout spot. Everybody goes there. What's that? What's that? I want to go where everybody knows. Your name? Yeah, that's cheers. Y'all don't even know that. See, I ain't gonna tell my age. I ain't gonna tell my age. I ain't gonna tell you. I'm sure everybody goes there. Everybody. This is why it's so easy to identify the spies. I'm sure they didn't dress like the Jericho people. You know, they look different. They talk different. They act different. Hey, matter of fact, that like if any southern person goes up north and say one word, they know y'all from the country. They know it. Just to show shoes on your feet, you've got to be from the south. <laughs> now, you have the king's men, the police. Somebody said the police. police. The police shows up at Rahab's door demanding that the spies come out. Now, I find it very amusing because, you know, if, 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 if the king sends the king's men there, knowing that there's spies in her house, they would have bust the door down and went and did a search of the house. They didn't. This lets me know they have relationship because they, 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 because they probably knew her, knew her because that's probably where they got their entertainment from when they were off duty. This is Daniel Thought. I just, I, can I use my imagination a little bit? <laughs> it ain't the book, but it, you know, it sounds good. So they had some type of relationship. But I... I am sure Rahab had fear because the spies are there. 
the spies are there. He, the, the spies are in the house. So if the spies are in the house, that means she has to feel some type of fear because now she ha- is in a place, but she's telling them they're not there. So I want to give you the steps. Are you ready? It's just three, it's just three steps, three points I want to give you to help you go from fear to faith. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, are you ready? Okay, number one, number one, to go from fear to faith, uh, moving from fear to faith, number one, you, there's, there's always a risk. There's always, there's always a risk. A risk is a chance of an investment will lose its value. It's always a risk. Here, let's find out the risk. Here it is right here. But the woman had taken the two men and hid them. She said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they come from. Okay, I can believe that. Can you believe that? Come on, can you believe that? All right, cool. Just talk to me. It's okay. Talk back to me. Here you go. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. Uh Uh-oh. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch them. Oh, my God. Rahab hides the two men. Something tells me that Rahab knew how to hide men real good. (laughs) Listen to me. Listen to me. She lies and say they left, and she don't know where they went to. Wow. And she manipulates the men to tell them to go look somewhere that she knows the spies are not there. Get this. Please consider this. Rahab is not a believer. Rahab is not a Christian. She's not. She's not. So, 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 so keep that in mind. But can I tell you, can I tell you something? I'm going to tell you anyway. God can even use the sinful things of this world for his glory. He can use what you, what you, what you call sinful. God can use it for his good. Matter of fact, Romans 8, 20, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord, which are called by his name. Can you imagine? Look at this. You know how the enemy is, is against our young people in that generation and try to, try to mess up their identity and try to pull them down? But you see what it's created? It has to create a revival at, at each college because God takes the sinful things and make good out of it. He can take the bad, the good, and the ugly and bring glory out of it because God is just that bad. So he, he uses this sinful thing. Now, now let's, let's keep going. But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them under the stalks of the flat she had laid out on the roof. So the men set out to pursue the spies on the road that led to the force of, of Jordan. And as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. Wow. Did you know... Rahab is taking a risk by lying and committing treason. If you lie to the king or to any government official in Jericho, the punishment comes to death. And not only to her, but to her whole family. I don't know about you, but who does, you, who, who wants to lose something valuable? By taking a risk. Ain't nobody, who, nobody likes to take risks. Nobody. Let me tell you a secret, though. When you take a risk in God, he can turn things around for you. Uh, uh, let me tell you that, 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 that when you take a risk in God, he will, you will gain more than you'll ever lose. When you take a risk in him. Because He's too big to lose. And he is guaranteed assurance. It's like falling back knowing God going to catch you. If you have to take a risk and trust God, and that's what Rahab did. She took a risk and trust God, and she don't even know God. And she still took a risk. That is a risk. So number one, there's always a risk. But number two, there's always a reality check. A reality check. Always a reality You know, um, uh, I'm old school rap, so help me out. You better check yourself for you. Oh, somebody done been listening to that rap. 
Sometimes you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. So let's find out how this reality check took place in Rahab's life. Here it is right here. Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof. Now, mind you, the, the people are going out the gate. So they're not looking for the spies anymore. They're looking for the spies outside the gate. So now Rahab had a conversation with the spies on the roof. And she said to them, read it, highlight it. Hold on, hold on. Come on, I want you to give us some excitement because you got to get some boldness about this. This is, a good, this, is a good, this is a good statement right here, okay? Here you go. And she said to them, that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melted in fear because of you. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Lord, here you go. She says, we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you. When you came out of Egypt and what you did to Shalom, Shalom of Oregon and to the kings of Ammonites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. Oh, my goodness. The cat is out the bag. Here is Rahab, a citizen of Jericho, where her loyalty lies with the king and the country. A Canaanite woman exposing to the Israelites her enemy that what that, that wants to take the land that she's living in. She's having a conversation with them. And she says, I know that the Lord has given you this land. And the enemy has just showed his hand. You remember because you remember the, ten, the 12 spies went over, they were scared. They've been, they've been scared the whole time about, about, about Jericho and, and possessing the land. They've been, they, 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 they just been walking around the, the, the desert for 40 years. People see God working in your life when you don't even realize he's working. When God is working in you, 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 you know, you're in it. So the people around you see it, but you can't see it because you started fighting trying to get to the promise. But here's Rahab. Her loyalty is to Jericho and the people of Jericho. And she admits to the enemy that the Lord has given you this land. And she said, we scared of y'all. We scared. And listen to this. She said, and when we heard about the Red Sea. Now, mind you, the Red Sea experience was 40 years ago. So you telling me that y'all been scared for 40 years while we've been walking around the desert? You're telling me that we could have been, don't have the promised land, but our fear kept us in a place we didn't want to be. How many of us have found ourselves in a place of fear because we were scared of our enemy? The Lord has given you the land. That's what she said, the Lord has given you this land. And she recognized that she was living on somebody else's promise. Living in a place that she don't even have ownership of. Rahab recognizes that the deed holders was en route to possess their promise. She knew. She recognized. She realized. She had a reality check that this ain't mine. And I need to get on the right side of this issue. Because if I stay here, I'm going down. So she had to make a decision and she had to recognize where she was at. When is the time in your, when is the time in your life that you stop and recognize what was causing you fear in your life? When have you have, have, have been in a place and, and fear just dropped on you and you felt like, how in the world am I going to get out of this? How am I going to make a way from this? And you're so worried about what, what, what's going to happen, what could or could not happen, that you're not even realizing. Let me understand that I can't do this by myself. I need to trust God. Because I tell you something, fear can't do, move nothing. The only thing fear can move is your blood pressure. To send it up. But faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. It can move a mountain. 
So what, so what, what is it that's holding you back? What fear is holding you from the promise that God has given you before the foundation of the earth? You, you need to realize that I can't do this by myself. I can't get there by myself. I need God to get there with me. I got to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he's going to direct my path. But I got to trust him. I got to believe him. And I got to know if God got me to it, he'll bring me through it. I got to know... That in spite of what's all around me, in spite of what the enemy has set up, I'm not going to allow the enemy to win. Because I trust God, and he wins every time. He wins every time. So you need to know how important it is. Because when we heard it, our hearts melt. When they heard about it, our hearts melt, and everyone's courage fell because of you. You, the Lord, the Lord your God, is God in heaven and above and on and below the earth. She now grew up pagan and did not know God. She heard about him, but didn't know him. But now she's saying, hey, I'm going to believe your God because your God is Lord over everything. And I want to be on that team instead of this team. Amen. When you get a reality check, you realize that it's not about your strength, it's about God's strength. It's not about how smart you are, it's how the creator is and what he can do because he owns everything on heaven and in earth. It's the creator. So, so let's move on, let's move on because, because moving, moving from fear to faith, number one, there's always a risk. Number two, there's always a reality check. And number three, there's always responsibility. It's always responsibility. Here it goes. She says, now, now mind you, she, she, she says, okay, listen, okay, I, okay, we're going with your God now, okay, I, I, listen. So listen, I won't keep you, but, but, but let me tell you, I believe your God now. I'm changing my life. I'm changing my ways. I, I, believe, what, I believe the God that you serve now, okay? Uh, say okay. Okay, okay, okay. And it says, now then, somebody said now then. Now then. That means something just happened. Can I tell you what I feel like just happened? She just gave her heart to the Lord. Amen. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family. Because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. Mm, that sounds like Jesus, don't it? Didn't he come to save us from death? Didn't he come to, to, to conquer death, hell, and the grave? Yeah. Jesus done that for us, didn't he? Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, listen, listen, listen. Our lives for your lives. Mm. Our lives for your lives. The men assured her, if you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithful when, when the Lord gives us the land. Somebody say when. when. Somebody say when. when. So you get this? They went. From scouting out the land, having maybe a little bit of doubt how we're going to get this. But now they're saying when we take the land, because now they know they're going to take the land. It says when we take the land. And so in, in, in the beginning of that, he says, our lives, our lives for your lives. Didn't Jesus give his life for our life? Wow. He gave his life for our life. So let's go, let's go. He says, so now the men's has said to her, this is an oath you made to us, swear will not be binding on us. Unless when we enter the land, you have tied a scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you have brought your father and mother and your brothers and your family into your house. Look at the neighbor, say neighbor. Come on, say it loud, say neighbor. Come on, say it real loud. Say neighbor. neighbor. Stay, in the house. Stay in the house. 
stay in the house. Because let me tell you something. When we come and attack, he says, when we come to attack, you need to make sure your family is in the house. Because when we come in through, when we come through there, we're killing everything that's walking through the city. So you need to get your family and stay in the house. Can I tell you something? You want to be, you want to go from fear to faith? Stay in the house. Stay in the house. Stay in the kingdom. Stay in the body of Christ. Stay in church. Because when you're outside of church, when you're outside of the ark of safety, that's when you'll find fear. Because, you don't, because, you, because you're doing it on your own strength. That's why it's so important to stay in the house. Because if you don't stay in the house, that's how the enemy takes us under. That's how fear come over us. And that's how we find ourselves doing things we don't want to do. We find ourselves walking around scared of everything. Because we're not up under the ark of safety. We're not in the house. And don't just get in the house, but stay connected in the house. When you're connected in the house, go to small group. Make sure you're, you're serving. Make sure you're tithing because when you're connected in the house, it's hard to pull you out the house. So important that if you want to go from fear to faith, you got to stay in the house. Somebody says stay in the house. You see, that person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. Let me tell you this. Because of Rahab, because she went from fear to faith. Let me tell you, did you know that Rahab, that is not a Jew, Canaanite woman, worship idol gods. Do you know she's in the genealogy of Jesus? She married Simon, had a son named Boaz. You remember Ruth married Boaz? And she stayed in what God called her to. She went from Jericho's kingdom to God's kingdom. She went from stealing the promise to obtaining the promise because the promise was given only to God's people. I'm going to tell you something. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, that's a good kingdom to be a part of. Because he'll walk with you, he'll talk with you, he'll lead you, he'll guide you. And because Rahab had did such an act of faith that even James, in the five, four or five hundred years that's gone on down the road, we're in the New Testament, that's the Old Testament, we're in the New Testament, James, which is who? Jesus' brother, writes about her in James 2, 24 through 26. I won't read it now. You see? That person who you consider righteousness by what they do and not by faith alone? In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute consider righteousness for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? All because she went from fear to faith. Here it is. As the body without spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. So she put her faith into action. She went from fear to faith to put it in action. She said, I'm just not going to talk about it. I'm going to be about it. I'm going to show you how God works in my life. I'm going to show you that he's a keeper. I'm going to show you that God will deliver. I'm going to show you that in the midst of fear, God will bring you out. You have faith to do what God's called you to do. From faith, from fear to faith, from fear to faith, you got to have. Number one, you got to have, always take a risk. Number two, you always, there's always going to be a reality check. And number three, there's always going to be responsibility. Many of you in the room today have found yourselves 
in a place of fear. Because I'm going to be real with you. I don't care how long you've been saved, how long you've known the door, Lord. We've all had faced fear before in our lives. We faced fear before when the doctor told me I'd never walk again. You face fear when the doctor tell you you got cancer. You face fear when your child, you realize your child has an addiction. You face fear when, you're, when, you're, when your spouse say, I want a divorce. You face fear when you feel like everybody's against you. You feel like you ain't got enough money to pay the bills. You face fear. And fear sometimes will, 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 will influence your emotions. And you will react instead of responding. But I want to tell you something. When you take a risk and trust God. When you take a reality check. I said, I can't do this by myself. And then you take responsibility that says, okay, what I'm going to do? What, what my next step going to be? Because let me tell you something. You got to always keep moving. Stop sitting there waddling in fear like a pig in mud. Get up from there. Dust yourself off. And say, I lived in fear long enough. It's time to possess the promise that God has for me. It's time to go get it. Because I lived in fear all my life. I'm going to tell you this story. I, a couple of years ago, I listen, I never wanted to go back to school. I never, ever wanted to go back to school. I hate school. Can I get an Amen. And so I, I went to mortuary science school. I barely, I barely passed out of mortuary science school. You know, Pastor has this thing. Y'all go, go to Bible school. Go to Bible school. Get more learning. I'm like, nah. Nah. Uh-uh. Well, he kept on asking, kept on bugging. So I went on ahead and did it. I'm telling you, I didn't want to do it. I did not want to do it. I said, man, because the fear of failing. Can I be honest? I have a fear of failing. Anybody ever have a fear of failing before? You don't want to start something because you feel like you're going to fail at it? So I didn't want to fail because when you've been through a lot of failures in your life, that's a fear of mine, I'm sorry. I've been a lot of failures in your life and you're always falling. You feel like you got to get yourself up and dust yourself off again. You get tired of falling, especially when you get old. It take, long, it take a longer time to get up off the ground. So I had a fear of failing, but I just went on ahead. I said, okay, let's do it if I'm going to go. At least I can, at least, if I can at least pass with these, I'll be all right. I went on to school, pushed my way through. Being a father, being, working full-time and doing ministry. I tell you, it was hard going to school full-time. But I'm going to tell you, on May the 16th, I'm going to graduate and I'm on the dean's list because my fear went to faith and believed that God can make a way. When you put your fear on part of your feet, and trust God, he'll bring you out like never before. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. He'll bring you out. God has a way of taking your fear, turning into faith. I want, I want you to take a few moments. I want every head bow, every eye closed for the next few moments. I want you to think about something only you know. This ain't about nobody else in the room because you have your own fears in your life. And I want you to take an inventory of your life and see where fear is. It's fear raising my children. It's fear thinking I'm going to fail if I try something. It's fear there if I go ahead and leap out and start that business. It's fear there. Search your life and see what fear is. Because I believe the day God will not take that fear and move it into faith. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to pray for the people in the room because the reason you got fear is because you're outside the house. And you've been trying to live your life by yourself. I understand you grown, I'm grown, everybody grown. But it's hard doing it by yourself. I'm telling you to come on in the house. God wants you to come on in the house. He's calling you. He's knocking at your heart right now. And he wants you to accept him as your personal savior right now. To come on into the family. Come on into the kingdom. 
with every head bow, every eye closed in the room, if that's you right there, if you say, I'm ready to step into the kingdom, I'm ready to step into the body of Christ, I'm ready to come on in the house. I've been out there long enough, Daniel. One, two, three, I want you to raise your hand. Go. Raise your hand. One. Come on. Two. Three. Four. Wow. Father, we thank you for every head, hand raised in the room. Thank you, God, that you're pulling them in the house. They've been living in fear, living, living how they're going to get from one day to the next day, living how they're going to get from one paycheck to the next day, living, from, living in a fear of not being able to socialize or to build relationship or build community. But God, I thank you that your arm is so long that you'll grab them and pull them on in. Thank you. God, we are calling you Lord of our life right now by believing in our heart, confessing our mouth. And that we are saved. Come on, can we clap our hands right now for the people who gave their life to Christ? All right, listen. In the next few moments, I'm gonna be real with you. Can I be honest? Like this message really got to me because I saw Rahab with what we do through the Dream Center. I I love I love those I love underdogs. I love them because. Somebody got to be able to advocate for people like that. And I want to tell somebody in the room, if you feel like you ain't good enough, God can take what you got and use it for the glory of God. All you got to do is take a risk, get a reality check, and take responsibility. In the next few moments, the prayer, the prayer, the prayer team is coming. We're going to open up the altar. Now, listen, I, I, I know that some people say, listen, I'm reserved. I'm, I'm reserved. I don't, I don't want to come to the altar. I'm telling you, there's power in making a step of faith. Some of us have fear of stepping out from our seats coming to the altar. Today, you can break that fear today by putting one foot in front of the other and just making a step. Say, I'm coming to the altar because I want to, I, I'm, I'm just putting that fear behind me. So anytime the altar opens, I'm running there. So in a few moments, when Shataka begin to sing this song, I want you to just step out your seat and come to this altar. There'll be some people to pray for you. Or you can just sit here and say, God, deliver me from fear and change my fear into faith. Now listen, that first step is the hardest step. I'll be real with you. But every step get easy. And just like you're taking a, 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 a step of faith just walking to the altar, you're making the same faith steps in the place you have fear. Now, come on, Shadok, let's sing this song because I believe this song will get them right there where they need to. Let him turn it in your faith. The office is open to you for you to come. Watch him work it for your good. Come on, don't worry about nobody else. Come on, take that step of faith right there. Say, I'm he's not step. done I'm with step. what he I'm coming from a place. That I don't usually come from. I don't never usually walk. But today I'm making, I'm making a leap of faith and I'm stepping out. And I'm coming to a place. Let him work and let God know I'm here. Favor. I'm waiting. Use me as you will. Watch him work it for you.
with us. We hope you heard from God today. Remember, scan the QR code so that we can give you your free gift. And don't forget to text 411 to stay up to date on all that's happening at LifeSprings Church.